Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys the digitally digested segment for the Asus Transformer TF300, which is what you're looking at right here. This is the 16 gigabyte blue version of this Wi-Fi ICS tablet, and really, so far, I'm very impressed with the performance, especially at its $380 price point. Now, there is also a 32 gig version priced at $400, and clearly, it's a no-brainer if you know, you want that extra internal storage. But since this is aimed at being a budget tablet, I can understand why there is a less expensive 16 gig model, especially since that was something not offered when it came to the higher end prime. You only had 32 gig and up in that uh, class of tablet. So, uh, you know, if you can live with the 16 gigs of storage, especially in light of the fact that there is a micro SD card slot, much like on the prime, which you can expand the storage up to, as far as I know, it might even be 128 gigs, but I know without question it's 64 gigs right now, then I see no reason to endorse even the 16 gig model. But moving away from you know the actual price points, let's talk about what you're getting here. You're looking at a 10.1 inch, 1280 by 800, so 720p IPS display. It does not have the super IPS plus display found on the Prime. So really, what does that equate to? Less brightness, folks. Uh, if you need a tablet that is going to be able to perform in bright light outdoors, then the Prime is going to have a superior screen. Otherwise, I can't really give it um, much more in its favor, meaning the Prime uh, having an edge on the screen of the TF300. So the screen is really good, especially at its price point. Uh, very similar to the screen that we found in the original Transformer, if that gives you any uh, indication of performance. Moving away from the screen, you do have, most importantly, a quad-core Tegra 3 processor. Now this is a lower voltage version, in other words, slightly underclocked compared to the one found in the Prime, but performance is, in my opinion, on day-to-day -day use, pretty much spot on. I haven't seen it really slow down. Uh, the issues, at least, that uh, you know, I found in the Prime do pretty much duplicate here. Uh, some people have stated that overall they're having less bugs in the, you know, in the firmware builds uh, designed for the TF300. I pretty much have seen very similar, if not uh, exactly the same performance. You know, sometimes it works perfectly and then occasionally you have a hiccup. It's really just, you know, part of life as far as no matter what OS you're using uh, out there right now. But that aside, let me show you some browsing. Of course, I mentioned already that this tablet does have um, you know that quad core processor which in terms of future proofing is critical in my opinion no question about it and that's part of the beauty of this budget tablet is that you're actually getting still one of the best processors uh, driving any tablet experience on the market today as far as Wi-Fi performance there's no question the Wi-Fi chipset on here is superior or I shouldn't say the chipset let me uh, you know correct myself there the build differences in terms of having the plastic backing as opposed to the metallic backing found on the Prime has allowed for better performance from the Wi-Fi chipset on board here. As a result, I have seen better overall uh, not only speed on, you know, things loading, but also the actual um, distance, you know, performance in terms of range. Uh, beyond Wi-Fi, you do have Bluetooth, of course, and you know pretty much everything is the same as I mentioned before in terms of performance a gig of DDR3 RAM impressive no question and of course you do still have HDMI out the front facing cam is 1.2 megapixels the rear is 8 I found both of them to be almost on par with the Prime which says a lot considering you know the Prime is at the top in my opinion of camera quality right now in the tablet market but of course as you all know if you are a subscriber and have watched any of my videos, uh, I'm not a tremendous fan of cameras on tablets to begin with, except for front facing, of course, for uh, video conferencing, Skype, those things. That's, you know, something we just can't be missing on something that's intended to replace any type of computing device. So, you know, hardware aside, really, there's no question that the TF300 delivers in every element, every aspect. It is basically the prime, less the quality of build. So let's talk about the quality of build. Uh, you know, you're looking at a screen that doesn't have Gorilla Glass, like the uh, prime, doesn't have that super IPS plus display, which is really twice as bright 
and again only useful really for outdoor viewing so that may not be important to many of you out there it really depends on whether or not you are trying to do any kind of um, e-reading or general tablet use in bright sunlight I don't think the majority of users do but again it is you know notable it should be mentioned uh, if you guys are trying to make an educated decision on whether or not a tablet like this or the prime is right for you uh, furthermore the actual entire um, build is plastic of course you don't have that spun metal finish which I'll show you right now very quickly it is just a plastic build it does though very much resemble the finish found on the prime so even though it's not metallic spun just the actual plastic mold does still mimic the uh, spun finish of the prime really do like that as far as uh, giving you guys a walk around tour you've got your volume rocker here which has actually changed the physical buttons by the way an actual design the mold has changed on this entire tablet despite the fact that it looks like you know a less expensive uh, twin of the prime you've got the HDMI out right there of course to the right your S your micro SD card slot right there a microphone at the bottom it's interesting you know the original the prime uh, shipped with rubber inserts for the uh, docking ports for the uh, you know the docking station and I, I laugh a little bit there because a common problem for people um, you know was that they would try to dock the original the transformer prime onto the docking station with the rubber inserts which were obviously there to uh, protect these slots from letting dust get inside the tablet so uh, you know Asus decided to nip that in the bud by simply removing them out of the box so uh, this way you know no questions and I can understand why some people would be confused because Asus does not provide any instructions to even let people know that you have to remove those so uh, definitely smart that they did that but otherwise everything else pretty much the same you know serial numbers and are still on a sticker I would definitely prefer to see them uh, be you know silk screening that onto the device like every other manufacturer in the world but I am nitpicking here it's a very small uh, you know criticism of what is really a great tablet so far in my opinion uh, as we move to the right side uh, of the device you can see we've got our three and a half millimeter headphone jack which oddly enough unlike on the prime actually you know opens up to the back side of the tablet which is a little bit bizarre but again something I can't really spend too much time focusing on because this is a three hundred and eighty dollar tablet with basically all of the perks of its five hundred dollar uh, sibling except for build quality as I keep pointing out your uh, stereo speaker even though it is a single speaker I have to say really impressed with the audio output from this louder than the prime in many instances as I flip to the well before I get to the top you can see you've got your 8 megapixel cam right there which I mentioned does have pretty good quality and then the top of the finish uh, or rather the the top side of the tablet the finish you know pretty much uh, flat nothing going on here but the power button is definitely larger which I'm going to show you guys in a moment when I compare this to the prime so we've seen that power button get considerably larger an indication to me that really Asus just focused on improving their design here especially if they were going to give you guys a more a budget friendly tablet why not fix things that really didn't you know dig into the bottom line something like design because this is after all just really a mold and uh, getting things straight so from a design perspective I really like what they've done uh, they've gotten a lot of things right here uh, things that were wrong essentially with the prime in many ways this plastic backing of course does allow the GPS and Wi-Fi functionality uh, to top or best the performance with the prime whether or not though that is a reason to upgrade I would say absolutely not you know if you're a prime owner unless you hate it for some reason uh, I wouldn't be looking at a tablet like this because clearly uh, the TF300 is aimed at the budget market and the infinity will be coming out uh, I, we don't have a firm date but I would imagine sometime in the summer when we get all of the new tablets from basically every manufacturer on the block so if you're waiting for a new high-end uh, transformer to replace your current prime I wouldn't be looking at this however if you're new to the market and looking for best-in-class performance uh, at you know the lowest price in the marketplace period the end for hardware that really is you know still ahead of just about everybody in 2012 then the TF300 really does deliver that um, the screen fantastic as I mentioned before uh, key difference really in my opinion more so than the extra brightness that you have with the prime is just the Gorilla Glass is missing you know I like to have Gorilla Glass on every device that I have 
But clearly, you know, taking away that patent, that, that uh, extra money they would have had to spend uh, using Gorilla Glass, that's part of the reason that we're able to get such a powerful tablet and a device that, in my opinion, really does bridge the gap uh, between, you know, real computing and mobile devices at, you know, under, or I should say, such a low price, really under $400. And, of course, as this goes on sale, which I'm sure it will, uh, as new models come out uh, and become more competitive, you know, Acer just released their Tegra 3 based device. So did uh, Toshiba, which I'm looking forward to get my hands on the uh, Excite. You know, you just have so many offerings. I wouldn't be shocked if we see this tablet down at around, you know, the, the mid to low 300s uh, sooner than you would expect. And of course, who can forget the ability to dock with that docking station, the extra battery life. Uh, and, you know, just the ability to really take your tablet uh, experience and turn it from, you know, just entertainment to true productivity, which to me really, uh, you know, delivers on your spending, your value in your experience. You know, how, how many dimensions would you like to get from your tablet? So that's where the TF300 really shines. Another important, important thing I want to point out is battery life. That is the other difference between this and the Prime. Unfortunately, part of... Uh, the cost savings, the, the corners cut here was a smaller battery. So you're looking at around more of an eight hour battery as opposed to that 10 hour battery life uh, that you'd find with the Prime. Again, whether or not that's going to be critical to your use is really going to come down to your expectations and whether or not you plan on picking up the dock because the dock does add approximately another five hours, four to five hours of use. So really, if you pick up the dock, I would have to say that the battery life difference that you're going to be giving up in you know taking the TF300 is pretty much irrelevant. Let me see if I can go ahead and give you guys an example of some flash playback. No reason not to. Of course, this is over Wi-Fi, uh, wi and I am nowhere near the router, just so you guys know that in advance. Go ahead and type in the Digital Digest, see what we get. How many crazy results come up in the mix. And I just can't emphasize enough that I know Acer's new tablet is quite nice as well. I've seen it. I like it. But in terms of what you're getting here for the value, I give Asus a lot of credit, especially since the Prime is still in very short supply. This tablet is pretty much available everywhere, which is definitely a good thing. At least in my experience so far, it has been available pretty much everywhere. Let me go ahead and just load up something. Take a look at uh, how about the unboxing of this. Or maybe a better sample would... No, I want to give you guys audio. So let's go ahead and go to the unboxing. And I'll actually just do this in the YouTube app for the sake of ease here. Welcome back to the cleaning games. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser Extra Who doesn't love advertising? Faster on permanent marker. It looks like Mr. Clean has won everything. The cleaning games are finished. And so are we. Clean more, work less with the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser Extra Power. Okay, Mr. Clean, let's go. Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys a quick look at... Let's go ahead and skip ahead. Forward, pretty simple here, as it should be. And there you have it. This is the transformer pad. Very similar, of course, to the packaging we would find with uh, the Prime. Basically pointing out some key uh, components. As you can see, the, of course, quad-core processor, you know, noticeably how thin it is at 9.9 uh, .9 millimeters. Uh, very good viewing angles, 178 degrees. 8 megapixel uh, rear camera. I believe the front is 1.2 megapixel. Uh, little piece about the uh, stereo sound. And of course, that keyboard dock, which is the most definable and uh, noteworthy characteristic of the uh, Transformer lineup. And of course, Ice Cream Sandwich 4.0. Okay, so I think that gives you guys an idea of uh, just general video and audio playback performance. It's been flawless, much like anything running atop the Tegra 3. You know, as I've told you guys in the past, uh, with my Prime, and it's no different here with the TF300, if I want to play back uh, footage directly from my NEX7 shot at 28 megabits per second, you know, 1080p, 60p, it plays back completely smooth. Granted, you have to have the right media player, but it gets the job done. And I really just, you know, I want you guys to know that if you're looking for a budget tablet, there's no way you're going to pick this up and be disappointed. Granted, you're not going to get that build quality that you get with the uh, Prime. And the Prime is a little bit lighter. 
Um, let me go ahead and get rid of this. The Prime is a little bit thinner, you know, as you can see, um, you know, very similar in terms of design. There's that metal spun finish like I was talking about before. But, you know, you're looking at 1.29 pounds with the Prime, 1.4 with the TF300. So they're really close. So it really just comes down to, you know, again, are you looking for the budget device? Uh, and this clearly is it. But even though it's the budget device, as I mentioned before, it improves upon the Prime in many ways. Uh, can't, uh, you know, stress enough if you're looking for an upgrade to that Prime, hold off, wait for the Infinity, see the Samsung 10 One. Uh, with pen, see all of the new tablets that are going to roll out over the summer with higher resolution screens because those are the real updates to the Transformer Prime. Uh, but finally, I just want to show you guys uh, side by side, like I mentioned before, the uh, two tablets so you can see exactly um, at least how the design cues have changed. So let me go ahead and stack them. Of course, this again is the TF300, this is the Prime blue versus the uh, metallic or amethyst uh, gray. And if we just go start on the side here you'll see already that the volume rocker on the TF300 above much larger uh, micro uh, excuse me the HDMI port also just the way it sits in the housing has changed the micro SD card slot clearly different um, and that obviously is to address the fact that a lot of people were complaining that the card uh, would unintentionally eject from the Prime. I never really had that problem, but I guess it's a matter of how you actually uh, carry it, use it, take it in and out of your bag. Again, the bottom pretty much identical. Uh, the docking port on the TF300 is a little bit uh, more recessed, I believe, and it doesn't come into the curvature of the body of the tablet. And then on the back of the device, or excuse me, the right, right side of the device, you can see what I was mentioning before about the three and a half millimeter headphone jack actually moving even more into the back of the unit than it was on the Prime, which I just find a little bit odd. Speaker, there's your difference. Uh, and that may be the very reason that I told you the TF300 sounds like it's a little bit louder. And then last but not least, uh, as I mentioned before, the cameras, you know, you've got a flash with the Prime no flash with the TF300 and then most importantly that power button and as you can see the Prime has a much smaller power button than the TF300 so really it does appear if Asus was trying to address uh, you know design as well as functionality and I think they did a really solid job and did so at an even lower price point so really like what I see here and I think you guys will too if you get your hands on it if you have any questions or comments please feel free to post them and of course as usual please feel free to subscribe later